Hi, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach, and today I'm going to show you how to dye Easter eggs using natural stuff commonly found around the house. As part of an ongoing effort to ingest less mystery stuff in our house, we decided this year we'd forego the customary dye pellet in favor of something a bit more natural. I know, everybody loves a little dye pellet, and I'm no exception, but do you know what's in them? I don't. So why not give it a shot and use something that you know all of the ingredients? Here are the things that I use, the rules that I followed, and the results. Some of the results were pretty poor. Some of them were fantastic. The general rule is to use a cup of water to every cup of dyeing agent, simmer it for 30 minutes, and there you have your dye. That being said, the first couple of things that I'm going to try aren't exactly going to follow that rule. I'm going to use onion skins for one color and avocado peels for another. Since onion skins are a little bit tough to quantify, I'm just going to go with until they're covered, which I think is going to be about four cups. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. For the avocado peels, I'm going to go with three cups. It just feels like four cups might be a little bit too much. Now here's the next thing that doesn't exactly follow the rule. For spices like turmeric, for every four cups of water, put in one tablespoon of that spice. Add a tablespoon of white vinegar for every cup of volume that you have. Then one brown egg and one white egg or jar. Incidentally, if you want to know how to boil eggs so that they peel nicely, I'm going to put a link, hopefully right up here and down here, to the video that I did last year on how to do that. Now I'm going to let these beauties soak overnight and I'm going to bed. And now after about a 14 hour soak, here are the results. Hibiscus flower, geranium flower, avocado peel, onion skin, carrots, turmeric, grass, Kale, red cabbage, pomegranate juice, this is weird, yuck, look at the sludge that that thing made, oh let me put this back up here, <laughs> and lastly but certainly not leastly, beets. Now, just for comparison's sake, here are our two control eggs next to the other ones, just to see how much that they did or did not change color. So some of these were pretty big failures, at least where it comes to being beautiful, perfectly colored, shiny Easter eggs. Some of them were surprising to me. Grass? I mean, how well does that stain your clothes in an instant? One of the more prevalent colors in nature, if not the, and I can't get it to color an egg green. I don't know. I don't know. But some of them were also very successful. I was very surprised with the onion peel. I didn't. I read that that was a thing that you could color those eggs red with the regular old brown onion peel. It was far more successful than I expected. So the point being, there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can use to uh, to do something like this. I read about cayenne pepper, I think it was cayenne pepper, it's supposed to make a really cool orange and there's just a myriad of things out there that will dye things different colors that are, you know, food stuff, natural stuff. It's certainly not as easy, certainly not a lot more work than putting a little color pellet in a cup of vinegar and water, but uh, it's a fun, fun experiment to do with the kids, fun to see what, uh, what produces what results. So I really appreciate you watching and uh, while we're dyeing our eggs, while we're eating the ears off of our chocolate bunnies and such, let's do keep in mind precisely what we're celebrating 
at this time of the year. Happy Resurrection Day, everybody.